Hi, Jess. Thanks for showing me your temperature blanket. It's looking really great so far. I'm hoping someday I can do a project like that. Now, as you know, around this time of year, people tend to start talking about resolutions. And I'm sure you've heard all the same jokes as I have about them, that most of them are super ambitious and almost never kept for the whole year. In fact, every year, pretty much the entire comics section of the paper is devoted to this topic in January. As for myself, for most of my life, I never really made any resolutions, but over the past few years, I have given it a try. And I have sort of come up with my own little brand of resolution. And I haven't really shared any of these with many people, except for Aaron, of course. But I decided I wanted to share with you my resolutions and my own little system for making them. What I have found works best for me is that any resolution I make should be attainable, measurable, and beneficial. Now let me break those down for you. By attainable, I mean the goal should be feasible and fit within your schedule. In 2016, for my first resolution, I resolved to try one new thing each week. And in 2017, I decided to write in my journal at least one time each week. To come up with this number, I looked at my schedule and everything that I was already doing and decided on a goal that I thought that I could feasibly fit into my schedule. If I had tried to do any of these every day, it would not have worked or it would have been much harder. Next is measurable. I don't know about you, but most of the resolutions that I hear about are just about doing more or less of something, like more vegetables and less sweets, more reading and less TV or something like that. Um, but if that's your goal, it's really hard to know if you've succeeded at the end of the year, and it's hard to motivate yourself to do it, I think. I believe that picking a specific action that you can easily measure is a really big part of a successful resolution. I even found this really simple app called Goal Tracker, which I used to measure my progress. For me, measuring my goals in this way helped me a lot because I could see how much I had already done and how far I'd come, and it helped to motivate me to continue to do more. Most importantly, I knew when I had succeeded in completing my goal. And let me tell you, that is a great feeling. Last but not least, beneficial. Now this seems like a no-brainer, but I really did put some thought into what specific practices would be beneficial to me at each point in my life that I was making them. In 2016, I was really longing for adventure. And so by trying new things every week, I sort of planned for myself 52 mini adventures. In 2017, I was really feeling very anxious and scattered. And so I resolved to journal my thoughts every week to sort of help sort them out. But whatever you decide to do, if you don't believe in the benefits of the change that you are trying to make, chances are you will be much less motivated to make it happen. Now, if you're wondering about my resolution for this year, I decided that what I really need right now is to spend a lot more time reading and meditating on scripture. So my goal is to read the entire Bible in a year. And to measure it, I have these fun bookmarks that I picked up at church. And it has check marks for each day. Currently, I'm at day 10 and going strong. It's a much bigger goal than I've done in the past, but I think I can do it, and I think I really need to do it. So here goes nothing. Another way I'm going to measure it and to make it a little fun is with this cool spread I made on my bullet journal. I spent the better part of a Saturday making this, and I'm so proud of it. So Jess, that's all I have for you today, but I wanted to ask you and anyone else watching, have you ever made a resolution for the year? If so, how did it go? Let me know in comments. I love you and I'll see you on Monday.